Next line then, tax credit and other taxes. So other taxes, you might be subject to like self-employment tax. Now, notice that this, what we're talking about here is an income tax for the federal uh, tax, uh, federal taxes. So we're not talking about self-employment tax. You, you might say, well, what, what is this Medicare and Social Security shouldn't be on the income tax? Those are payroll taxes. And usually they're not really gonna be included if you're doing just W-2 income because the Social Security and Medicare was handled by the employers and it's not really part of the income tax kind of thing, even though it is on the W-2. But you could run into situations where there's problems, such as you have multiple employers and the person paid too much into Social Security and Medicare or Social Security at least because uh, they went over the cap or you might have a situation where they're not an employee, but they're sole proprietorship and the government then wants to calculate the Social Security and Medicare, but they can't do it through the employer. They can't do it through payroll taxes. So we, in essence, have to do it on the income tax with other taxes, which is going to be the uh, self-employment tax calculation. So that's when you then have to deal with on an income tax system the Social Security and Medicare, which are usually kind of payroll taxes, which are the self-employment tax. And then we've got, and also note that the credits, when we think about the credits, we've got what we might call the non-refundable and refundable credits. So non-refundable credits would be what we would normal, normally think of as a credit, meaning you're going to get a, a benefit, but you can't go below zero. So in other words, if, if you don't owe any tax, if your tax liability is zero, like then you're not going to get what we would call a refund, right? Because your tax liability was zero. So the credit will take you down to zero if it's applicable, but it's not going to take you past that. But some of the credits are refundable because they're more of a welfare kind of program. And therefore, if they're refundable, they could take you below zero, which could result in a quote refund, end quote, even though it's not really a refund, it's kind of a benefit program at that uh, point in time. Also note that credits are similar to deductions in that they're both good. So we like credits, we like deductions as taxpayers, but the credit, if you had $1 of credit versus $1 of deduction, the credit would be more valuable because you would get that full dollar back in terms of a tax benefit versus a dollar of a deduction would only reduce the taxable income and you would only get a benefit that would be dependent upon the tax rate that is being applied to the taxable income. So if you can get a dollar credit versus a dollar deduction, you would generally want the credit. But of course, the credits usually phase out and all that kind of stuff. So it gets way more complicated oftentimes.